As you probably know, I do a lot of 3D printing material testing on my channel and one of the most common questions that I always get is, what would happen if I annealed, baked or tempered the parts? Since there's barely any real data on that around, we'll thoroughly investigate that in today's video and take a look at the process to not end up with something like this. Let's find out more. Guten Tag everybody, I'm Stefan and welcome to CNC Kitchen. This video is sponsored by Squarespace. Squarespace is an all-in-one platform that I currently use to create a beautiful website where I'll post all of my research results in the future. Create your own website by browsing squarespace.com slash CNC Kitchen. More on them at the end of this video. I guess everybody who is owning a 3D printer for a while has heard about annealing prints to make them stronger and more heat resistant. The idea is pretty simple. You heat up your oven to a certain temperature, toss your parts in and after 30 to 60 minutes you switch it off and let everything cool down slowly. There are plenty of videos about it here on YouTube and I also already made a couple and showed how that process can improve the heat resistance of PLA from 60 degrees Celsius to even 180 degrees Celsius or increase stiffness. So besides Tom's video where he investigated the strength of annealed PLA in his filler win series, there isn't a lot of information about the change of strength around. This is why I finally thought it's time to perform an investigation, which is at least a bit scientific, in order to find out if rumors like if we can really fuse layers together and similar things really hold true. This will be a video series and in this first video we'll take a look at the most common material PLA. In the future I also want to find out if we can improve the mechanical properties of materials like PETG, ABS, nylon or polycarbonate. Before I spoil you with my results, I'd like to know from you if you ever heat treated your 3D prints and what your experience was. Also let me know of any other investigations or papers I might have missed and put your experience and ideas down in the comments. This video will be about PLA because this material has the special property that it can increase the crystallinity in the material by this process, which is not possible in other materials like ABS or PETG. This means that during the annealing process, the polymer chains that are initially in a dominant amorphous state, so unordered, rearrange in a more orderly fashion and the so-called crystallinity increases. This change in structure also changes the properties of the material, predominantly heat resistance, stiffness and other mechanical properties. If you ever tried this process out on your own, you will know that parts can also deform quite a bit. In order to investigate the annealing of PLA, I printed a couple of test samples out of Form Futura's premium PLA and then heat treated half of them to compare them to the reference later. I chose this material on purpose because it's not a hugely modified PLA, which is probably good for the crystallization process and due to its translucency we'll be able to see another optical change in the material. With higher crystallinity PLA becomes more opaque. I printed samples to test the strength and impact resistance of parts that were printed lying, so where layer adhesion doesn't have a huge impact, but also standing specimens where we can see if the layers fuse together more. I also put a 3D Banshee and a fan shroud on the print plate to nicely witness how a realistic part might change shape during that process. For the annealing process I put all of the parts in my preheated convection oven at a set temperature of 100 degrees Celsius for 45 minutes, then turned it off and let the parts cool down to room temperature over a couple of hours. Taking a look at the treated part themselves already showed that something changed in the material. Most obviously some of the parts were really deformed and for example my layer adhesion samples were totally bent. Fortunately though, the standing test hooks still looked usable. I measured a couple of parts and the dimensional change was up to 10%. The interesting thing is that the parts contracted in x-direction, so a 50mm part came out only measuring 45mm, but they expanded in z-direction, 
for example from 50 mm initially to 55 mm after the process. Unfortunately, the amount of deformation is not always the same and can rarely be compensated by just scaling the parts. This is particularly obvious if we take a look at the fan shroud that just warped all over the place. There are a couple of ways how you can minimize that effect. One way that I often use due to my removable print beds is that I put the parts into the oven still attached to the base with all of the supports and that greatly reduces a lot of warping and keep at least the base straight. Another one that I tried out is submerging the parts in sand. I tried that in a couple of pretests where it helped a bit but not to the point that it totally eliminated warping. I'll probably try it in the future with a bigger container so that the parts are more thoroughly held in position. Due to the thermal mass and the isolating properties of the sand, this might be a possibility to even out the temperature changes if you have an oven that is not properly controllable. There are also specialized materials like Form Futura's Volcano Peel layer around that barely warp during the annealing process but still are able to improve the heat resistance significantly. Another change that we see is that the parts became more opaque because they lose a bit of their amorphous structure. A good indication that the microstructure really changed. But now let's get to the real material tests you probably all have been waiting for. And if you enjoy these tests and learn something, then also make sure that you're subscribed and have clicked the bell to not miss any upcoming videos. Let's first start with the tests performed using my DIY universal test machine. The standard tension test specimens showed an ultimate tensile strength of 63.5 MPa on average. All samples yielded a good bit until they failed. Next, I tested the three specimens that I annealed while still attached to the print bed because the other ones were just too distorted. These samples failed on 68.2 MPa on average. This is around 7.5% more than the untreated ones and with the low scatter, statistically significant. They also failed quite similarly with a bit of plastic deformation before rupture. The plots look very similar and I can't really say that there has been a huge increase of stiffness noticeable. Also previous tests that I made in the past did only show an increase in material stiffness of around 7%. Now let's take a look at the results of the test hooks that I used to test a more realistic load scenario with tension and bending. So at first the lying hooks. The untreated one failed at 75 kg of load, whereas the annealed one was able to bear a good 16.2% more and ripped at 87 kg of force. This improvement is significant and very interesting, but I have to say that due to the shrinkage of the hook, the bending moment slightly decreased, which spoils the results a little. But still a good improvement. The most interesting point of this investigation was the layer adhesion that we tested with the hooks that were printed upright. The untreated ones failed on average at 42 kg of load and all cracked right between the layers as one would suspect. Now let's take a look at the one that was annealed. They also all failed on average at 42 kg of load. All right between the layers. So this is quite a bummer, but kind of confirms what I already experienced in the past. At least in all of my investigations, I was never able to improve layer adhesion with this heat treating process. The layers don't melt together better. And trust me, I tried. In my pretests, I even tried higher annealing temperatures of 140 degrees Celsius and 180 degrees Celsius with parts that I submerged in sand. I had to use the sand for the higher temperatures because otherwise my test hooks just melted away directly. Also for these, no real change. Some suggest the stress relieving the parts at first at temperatures right around the glass transition temperature. Did that for 5 hours at 55 degrees Celsius and then additionally annealed them at 100 degrees Celsius for 45 minutes. There was a change in the amount of warping I got because that was reduced, but again, no significant improvement in layer adhesion. 
Last but not least, I tested the impact resistance using notched impact test specimens. The parts are struck by an impact hammer that has a known amount of kinetic energy before the impact. The amount it swings further after the strike determines how much energy was used during the impact, thus telling us the impact resistance. Here I would have suspected that the annealed specimens behave more brittle, but that wasn't the case and all six specimens were able to absorb roughly the same amount of energy. I don't really know if I want to call annealing PLA busted at this point. Well, this process definitely improves the thermal resistance of the material significantly, but in terms of mechanical properties, the gain of around 10% is, in my opinion, only very small, and I have definitely not seen anything in terms of fusing the layers together. I'm sorry to give this verdict. My research hasn't brought up any way to fuse these layer boundaries together without remelting them. This is especially all overshadowed by the warping problem that you usually have when annealing PLA. This can be tackled by material choice, stress relief or maybe submerging the parts in tightly packed sand, but probably still will cause you issues. Still, I think what shouldn't be overlooked and what is something that I will tackle in a future video is the stress relief annealing. Due to the layer-wise build-up process and the shrinking that happens during the cooldown, our 3D printed parts still have quite some internal stresses and these can reduce strength and especially ductility of the material. This procedure is something that can be done with basically any material, will be very interesting and will have more impact on the material properties than rather on the thermal resistance because it doesn't involve a change in crystallinity. Now, please let me know in the comments if the results of this annealing investigation is something that you have expected or if you made a different experience in the past. If you think I should have done something differently, I'd also be really happy to know and will investigate that in the future. Many have asked me in the past if the results of my investigations are available somewhere in a summarized form. Even though my patrons have access to the detailed test reports, I didn't have a blog or website where I post summary of my results. This will now finally change because of today's video sponsor Squarespace. Squarespace is the all-in-one platform to build a beautifully looking online presence. For the last three years my website was a blank landing page with a horrible looking imprint that I self-coded in HTML. Oh yeah. But now, finally, I'm using Squarespace that enables me to create and host a great looking website using their huge library of beautiful templates that are easy to customize. I'll be step by step adding the results of my old videos on the all new cnckitchen.com. And seriously, one of the best things I learned when creating my new website was their help center. Not only does the search work great, but they also have videos and animations for most help topics because I just hate reading long manuals. If you also want to build a website, start your free Squarespace trial today at squarespace.com slash cnckitchen and use code cnckitchen to get 10% off your first purchase. Thank you Squarespace for sponsoring this channel. Thank you for watching. I hope you have learned something new today. If you did, then please leave a like and make sure that you're subscribed for future investigations. If you want to support my videos and research, then consider becoming a patron or help me out in other ways. Also check the rest of my video library because I'm just about to reach 100 videos and there's a ton more for you to watch and enjoy. I hope to see you in the next one. Auf Wiedersehen and goodbye.